The biggest mod in Battlefield's history is launching soon. Titanfall 3 might be in active development, footage of a cancelled Doom game has been released, and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here. One of the biggest mods in Battlefield history is finally launching for Battlefield 3. The Reality Mod is a total conversion mod that turns Battlefield 3 into basically Squad, and that comparison isn't an accident. Squad itself is based on the Project Reality Mod for Battlefield 2. As for what the mod does, it redesigns the heads-up display to be more minimal, adds a realistic ballistics model, and tons of custom content like maps, mechanics, and more, all with Battlefield 3's destruction system intact. The gameplay will be team play oriented and very hardcore. Maps will also feature multiple time of day options for enhanced immersion. And if you're wondering how any of this is possible, Reality Mod runs in Venice Unleashed, a community made mod tool for Battlefield 3. So unfortunately, this mod will only be available on PC and you'll need a copy of Battlefield 3 to play it. Reality Mod has been in development for seven years and Venice Unleashed was in development for eight years before it finally launched. These are very very in-depth projects that people have been dedicated to for years. Based on the trailer for Reality Mod, it looks like that effort will be well worth it. When Reality Mod launches on the 17th, players will be able to create dedicated servers, tweak settings, and much more. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. Do you have a copy of Battlefield 3? Would you be interested in installing Project Reality? My first reaction upon seeing the trailer was that Battlefield 3 still looks pretty darn good. Yeah, it's a little dated in certain areas, but compared to a lot of indie shooters that are trying to replicate modern military combat, BF3 certainly holds its own. Now in some Battlefield adjacent news, Fall Damage Studio just revealed gameplay for their upcoming tactical FPS, Alara Prime. This studio was founded by four former DICE veterans and it's based in Sweden. Alara Prime will look a bit familiar to CSGO or Valorant players. It has those games old school weapon mechanics paired with character abilities and a big emphasis on coordination. The twist is that each match has three teams of four players rather than the typical two teams facing off. Two of the teams will be attacking while one is defending. The two attacking teams can also turn on each other instead of coordinating to take out the defenders. The game is class-based and offers four distinct classes, Assault, Infiltrator, Support, and Engineer. Each class has some unique weapons and gadgets, but there are also universal items that all classes can use. Now, if this sounds appealing, you won't have to wait long to get your hands on the game. Fall Damage is opening up pre-alpha testing this week for players in the EU. They have playtimes on the 15th, 16th, and 17th. Testing is limited to PC players on Steam. Signups are available on the game's website. The full release is scheduled for next year. Skyrim Together Reborn had a monumental launch over the weekend. It's a co-op mod for the beloved Skyrim game that syncs quests and items for up to eight players with online support and tons of additional features. So far, players have downloaded it over 50,000 times, and as you can imagine, turning a single-player game that was never intended to support anything beyond that results in some unavoidable issues. The developers of Together Reborn are working on fixing what bugs they can, but don't expect a seamless experience. Regardless of some of the jankiness, Together Reborn is certainly worth checking out. It's available on Nexus Mods. Speaking of co-op games, Halo Infinite's co-op preview launches sometime this week, eight months after the game originally launched. And if you're wondering why exactly that's a big deal, well, nearly every Halo title either launched with co-op or currently offers co-op gameplay. It's largely considered to be a staple of the franchise. 343 announced that Infinite's co-op and Forge modes would be delayed before Infinite launched, which was a massive disappointment for fans of the franchise. The co-op preview will run until the 22nd, but it doesn't have a firm launch launch date yet. The full launch date is in August. Forge Mode should be the next significant addition to the game later this year. Ubisoft announced server shutdowns for several classic titles last week. Over the weekend, they delisted Assassin's Creed Liberation HD and Silent Hunter 5 from Steam. Both games will be victims of these server shutdowns, and it seems unlikely that Ubisoft will restore them for purchase before those shutdowns happen. Steam says they were delisted at the request of their publisher. Both games are getting review bombed, and Ubisoft says they're assessing all available options to alleviate the frustration. Battle Royale Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt is getting a massive content update on the 14th. It adds the typical battle pass with fresh cosmetics to unlock and 8v8 team deathmatch mode. 
Character abilities and the game's full roster of weapons will be available. Blood Hunt devs are also pivoting the game away from a traditional seasonal update model. A big pain point for players has been the slow deployment of bug fixes and new content. In a recent interview, producer and former Battlefield veteran David Serlin said that the traditional seasonal release model was holding the team back. Starting with the summer update launching this week, you can expect bug fixes and gameplay updates to roll out much quicker. The devs are also considering lowering the price for future battle passes and making them shorter so players don't feel like they have to grind so much to unlock all the content. Job listings on the Respawn Entertainment website hint at a possible Titanfall 3 project currently in development. The listings call for several positions on an Apex Universe FPS incubation. Apex and Titanfall come from the same game world universe, so it's assumed that this project is either a single player Apex title or Titanfall 3. The listing specifically refers to the project as a brand new Respawn single player adventure. Realistically speaking, it's much more likely that we'll get a new Apex title before Titanfall 3. Respawn have previously said that their focus on Apex means that Titanfall will be on the back burner. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds next update is a massive addition to the game. It adds a new map called Destin that features a proper city as a key point of interest. The update is also available on the game's PC test server, but it officially launches on the 13th. Console players will have to wait until the 21st. Destin is an 8x8 kilometer map, which is pretty big compared to the game's other recent maps. The arena surrounding the city is a mix of swamps, mountains, islands, and flooded areas. And even the city itself is partially flooded. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. If you want more gaming news, be sure to subscribe. And that doesn't just ensure that every video we upload goes to your feed, it also helps us reach new viewers. So hit that subscribe button and thank you for the support. Noclip, the gaming documentary project led by Danny O'Dwyer, released never-before-seen footage of Doom 4. This is a cancelled Doom title that id scrapped partway through development before settling on what would eventually become Doom 2016. The Doom 4 footage shows much slower-paced gameplay reminiscent of Doom 3. The rest of the footage is a collection of Doom 2016 tech demos that show the very early stages of progress. Many of the cancelled Doom 4's assets appear in the demos. Seeing the drastic difference between early development footage and the final project is always fascinating, in my opinion anyway. And that wraps it up for Today in Gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.